Hey guys, welcome back to Area of the Stag, TR Tony here. Um, just a check in on UES 591S uh, a week or so after we've got it back home. And we had noticed a fair uh, smell of fuel around the car, particularly in the boot in recent uh, days. So uh, just to be on the side of caution, I thought I would investigate the uh, very well-known issue that a lot of Triumph Stags have, and that's with the petrol tank and the leaks that can come from the base of it in that uh, very enclosed space in the boot. So uh, let's just go and have a look. I'm going to take it out of the car and uh, see if we can learn something this afternoon. I suspect it has got a leak somewhere. Um, we just need to see where it is and if we can fix it. So onwards and upwards. Okay, so we've got back to the uh, back of the stag. I've got the uh, boot boards off and out of the boot, which is good. And it's just starting to rain again. Isn't that typical? Um, never mind, I'm going to persevere. So I've just taken off these, uh, these bolts. There's one here, one over here, one down the back here, and then one finally just down there, you can see with a standard uh, socket and extension. Um, I've taken the Jubilee clip off the rubber hose with the filler cap here. So that's now languishing down here. Um, must remember the um, order of the wires and that looks to be green and uh, black and then orange and green I think on the right hand side so just for future reference and um, planning now just to take it out disconnect There's a couple of other things you've got to disconnect here um, and I think that's probably about it and obviously I don't know how much fuel's in there but because it's leaking I don't want to take any risks so I will get it into the garage shortly uh, in a well ventilated area and uh, empty out what petrol there is to see where this problem is. I suspect I know, I suspect it's one of these bottom corners down here on the underside and I'll show you that once we've got the tank out and once I dry out. Happy days! And just for ease you can see that I've taken the top uh, Jubilee clip off so that's now disconnected from the filler cap on the outside of the car there which now means the tank is able to wriggle out. Um, I managed to release this end over here too so we're all set to uh, see what's what when I get it in the garage. Next shot out of the rain in the dry fingers crossed and what's really interesting is when you get the tank out um, on the face of it it all looks clean and tidy but actually if you look into the very pits of the boot you can see here this is fuel uh, residue it's actually started to peel away the paint look at that see under there so this is why stags corrode underneath their fuel tanks and uh, clearly that needs a bit of cleaning up and sorting out so I'll try and dry that off for now and then sort it out when we've got a slightly better day to do it and less windy you know, the wind getting up there like a good one but this is why stags get so I think dangerous in my view. Um, it is a design fault, we must be aware of it. You can smell it if uh, you can't see it, but uh, it's hard to find out sometimes where it's coming from. But that is where the leak is from, and uh, we're about to have another look at the bottom of the tank to see what's what underneath. Meanwhile, I shall put everything back in temporarily until next weekend when hopefully it's not raining quite so hard. So now we found a, an old jerry can with some fuel in. Um, so I'm going to be uh, pouring the remainder of the tank back in here, now having shut up UES 591S until we can sort this tank issue out. So uh, there you go. So we've got the uh, tank out now and um, emptied of fuel as much as you possibly can. You've got to be really careful because obviously there's lots of fumes still in there. The job next is to take off the uh, fuel sender unit which is actually a, a kind of um, screw fit on the top of the tank here. Just going to see if I can mark how it goes together so I know how to put it back when it comes to it. And what I've done is just use a little bit of Tipex to mark out where it goes and where it should come back to when we refit it. Make sure it's pointing in the right direction. I'll show you why in a minute. And by just simply knocking these tabs back, we've now released the sender unit. So that should now, hopefully, because it's all aligned, just pull out as you can see it is there. There you go. And this is the first time we've actually seen UES 591S fuel sender unit in the raw. And um, just pass it over to my colleague, Roger and Harry. 
smells, doesn't it? It smells, doesn't it? Does it, go, <laughs> does it go, I mean, these these often can. Yes, yeah, so that's moving, so that's good. And the float isn't full of fuel. A little Some, bit in there. A little bit, is there? Small amount in there. Okay, but not enough to... Um, not enough to sink it. To drown it. No, okay. Well, that's good. So, uh, now we're going to see what we can do with the rest of it. Without dropping it on the floor. So, if you just, as you've just seen, we've got the um, fuel sender unit out of the car. And, uh, as Harry said, there's not too much if any fuel in there at all actually so that's quite good so it means it will float on the surface of the fuel and as you know as this thing moves up and down it sends a uh, sends it a rear stat in there basically so that's that then adjusts to the height of the fuel in the tank and therefore that moves that arm and therefore that sends a signal back through here to your fuel gauge in the cabin as to whether the car is full and it would be up here or empty if it was down there obviously looking at this and the um, tipex i used evidently this actually faces forward into the tank so uh, clearly it's mounted in that way so the actual float is going up and down to the front of the tank here and i believe that's the fuel feed going out over here to the car which well goes into the pump and then off to the car so that's where it picks up from there um, here we have uh, i think this is a just a breather tube so if it does get any gases or needs to breathe out then it comes out through here and back out to the uh, open air eventually through the filler cap and on the face of it as we've seen with previous tanks I know I've banged on about this a few times but um, looks pretty reasonable uh, inside the tank doesn't look too bad actually um, you can't really see in there I'll try and get a light on it in just a second but it is quite clean uh, fresh metal in there so it looks like it has been cleaned at some point and that's encouraging for a start and I've just managed to get a little bit of light on the subject. You can probably just see that. Actually, it's, there's a bit of surface rust. You can just see there's some baffles in there to stop the uh, fuel flying around inside. But actually, that's not too bad. I've seen a lot worse. Um, there's no great big things in there flying about that would, could contaminate the engine. Um, so, okay, probably just do a bit of flush, but otherwise not looking too bad, I would suggest. Um, let's just tip it over that way see if I can see what that's like inside um, yeah not looking too bad so let's have a look at the underneath then see if we can see any of these typical stag problems that we encounter and again close inspection uh, this is now the underneath um, each corner looks okay here uh, so that's reasonably good still a smell of fuel which I must be careful of uh, but come around here and here you go here's the evidence um, Looks like someone's had a bit of a bodge here with some tape or mastic or bandage or something and I can feel it on my finger here. It's just beginning to um, start to uh, ooze, I think would be the right term. Let me just turn a light on the matter and you can probably see it a little bit better. So it looks like tape all around here, look, um, to try and bodge and stop fueling. In fact, you can see it. This is where it's leaking from. Only just slightly, but a little bit. Um, I think this is a drain plug. Um, I did try and undo it but was very mindful of the fact it was taking an enormous amount of effort and I didn't want to break the tank still further or twist it out or break it so I've decided to err on the side of caution and um, leave it for now just preferring to drain it through the uh, filler cap as I had done in previous tanks. Let's just flip it over one more time see if we can see any more damage. And it looks like it's had a whole series of repairs this thing um, right up to the top here. The ooze seems to be coming from this kind of area so that's the you can see it smearing there so that's where it's been draining somewhere around here but you can see there's bandage here all the way down here and then finally there's even a piece down here on this end as well so not very good I'm just going to try and scrape a bit of it off and see what comes I might be able to do a temporary repair but I think probably this needs a proper professional to look at it or a brand new tank uh, which isn't cheap we know but safety is paramount is it not and it really just goes to show, doesn't it, that um, as classic car owners, we have got to be so aware. Look at this. This is um, webbing or tape or something that's been stuck over it. Gaffer tape or something, I'm not quite sure. It's all coming off pretty easily with a scraper. Just be mindful, obviously, of any sparks or anything. Although, you know, the smell of um, fuel has now gone. Uh, but you can just see there how easily this stuff is coming on, off rather. And uh, there's nothing more than a sticking plaster over the blinking holes which is 
I think, very, very bad. Now, the issue, if you can see, and this is why I think all of us, the stag owners, need to be very aware, um, there's no one hole. This is the issue, I don't know if you can see that. If you look here, there's little tiny, tiny, tiny little pinholes um, in the metal all the way through, almost like a honeycomb. And in fact, this whole line up here, if you look really, really carefully, um, you can see there are some little tiny pinholes, hardly anything else. The, the fuel just seeps out, that's the problem. And uh, it's uh, subtle, but uh, nevertheless is there. And if I can move the tank over a little bit without dropping it over, you can see the difference between the good metal and the, the not so good metal there. You can see I've managed to um, scrape off uh, down to good metal here, and this is rusty metal here. So it's so subtle uh, a problem that you'd hardly even notice it but obviously one that we need to be aware of and one to address and sort or more of us are going to end up on the side of motorways on fire uh, and that ain't good at all. And the telltale sign you can actually just see here if you look very carefully fuel beginning to seep through that's the, uh, the telltale evidence of tiny little pinholes that you would hardly even notice were there but obviously it is and that's not good the true horrors and what I've done I've used a couple of scotch bright uh, pads as you can see down here various degrees of coarseness uh, that little scraper and the brush as well being very careful not to set off any sparks but I think we're fairly okay now um, and I think you can just begin to see here craters of the moon and it's just across this leading edge here um, all the way across as you can see tiny 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 pinholes you, I mean I'm, I'm zooming in as far as I can to get some focus but literally it's just subtle 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 but a bit like a perforated tea bag you can hardly see it a bit more of a crater down here that's more obvious and where it was leaking from earlier on as you saw and uh, that's what corrosion does to your tank so lesson learned I will just try and um, see if I can put something over the top of it for now just to stem any further leaks whilst we get uh, another one sorted uh, I do have three or four tanks now that I seem to have collected in my restoration journey and uh, I'll send out one or two messages and see what how I can sort this best uh, with safety in mind and uh, pragmatism at the same time without taking any risks um, this shot here I think is really showing up the uh, state of affairs. You can just see all the little pit holes here where fuel was just dropping through. And just a quick spray of brake cleaner um, actually makes it, uh, doesn't look too bad now, silver metal. I'm going to put some Genlite on it just to see what effect that has and uh, we'll have a look again tomorrow on another occasion. Okay guys, so uh, thanks for watching this afternoon. Just um, some cautionary tales regarding petrol tanks, you know. <laughs> I'm uh, encountering quite a few of these now, but never mind, we will get to the bottom of it. Uh, whether we replace or repair or whatever through one way or another, we will uh, prevail. <laughs> Good stuff. Okay, well thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And we'll see you on Ari the Stag very soon. All the best guys. Cheers for now.